Welcome along, all very relaxed, all off the cuff for the next hour or thereabouts, well 45 minutes actually, uh, if you don't include the ad break, through until 5 to 8 with sporting chat, specifically football chat, and I've been billing this, Blades v Owls, interchange that if you want, attack versus defence, because we have one of the finest defenders in recent uh, history of uh, Sheffield football with us this evening, and they're looking at each other because he doesn't recognise it. He doesn't recognise that that is John Newsom, who cost Sheffield Wednesday the princely sum of £1.6 million uh, not that many years ago, which was a huge fee at the time, wasn't it, John? It was a huge fee. Yeah, yeah. You're a huge yeah, fella yeah. as well. Yeah. And here Pound he is still pound. looking. Fit. Yeah. And <laughs> a fine attacking midfielder, from a great era at Sheffield United as well, Thank Mark you. Todd. Thank you. We haven't got a striker, but we're going to work on that. Maybe when we bring James Gregg in for the second <laughs> half, he yeah, can be the striker. Yeah, he'll have to drop in the hole. He's got the height to play on, <laughs> and then as a nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But who's going to play up front? That's the thing. That you're, was you're quite tall, aren't you? I'm quite tall. There's a big lad walking outside. <laughs> I'm quite tall is where it ends, I think, yeah. and where the conversation <laughs> ends. So it's great to, to have you here, and it's great to, to, to be here in February with such a lot to look forward to in terms of the end of the season on both sides of the city. Isn't it an exciting time, uh, Toddy? Really it's, is. Uh, we're delighted, aren't we? We've yeah. just spoke before. I'm absolutely delighted. Um, Chris and his team and the team, the squad, deserve every plaudit that's, that's been given to them. Um, I saw his interview today just on the Blaze player. He's obviously not taking anything for granted. Yeah. He's that type of, type, of, uh, type of bloke. But it's ours to lose. So we put ourselves, at, like I say, in a magnificent position, and and just to, just to justify the thing because there's some really talented players in there. He's bought really well recently. Um, Hans just gives that extra mention. Um, he's going to be a big asset in the running, um, but he's got uh, there's a lot of firepower around him. Those three lads in midfield uh, are superb, very complementary to each other. Um, we're an attacking side, um, and again. Chris is a defender, I think, in his own image. He, he loved to bomb on as a, as a, as a right-back. But, yeah, he's, uh, they're aware of what, what needs to happen. And I can only see his, uh, I can see his getting over the line. Yeah. I, I will cross my fingers, of course, but it, you never you know, know what can happen. It, it's very rare for anybody, certainly connected with the club, as, as you still are, Mark, mm. to actually venture that far and say, yeah, we'll get over the line. Everybody doesn't want to, nobody wants to tempt fate, do they, in that kind of situation, John? I think you just... If you do, if you do that, you, you're setting yourself up for for lot, lots of stick if it doesn't happen. Aren't you? There you go. You know? There you go. Well, you are, aren't you? You know, yeah. I mean, you but, know, and yeah. I think and that's that's always yeah. in my in the back of my mind, and, and I'm sure we with everybody else connected to football or involved in football, you you, you can't get ahead of yourself because mm. the day you do get ahead of yourself is the day that it'll come and bite you on your backside. But that just shows the level of confidence at the place. I think that that Mark is prepared to say that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, why but would you think negatively in the position that you're in? Absolutely, but we know ourselves from experience what can happen in order mm. to de derail everything. Mm. Yeah. But I think b because there's a plan in place, there is humility there, um, there's realism, again, about what could happen. Um, but I think it, we're in a magnificent position. Uh, it's ours to lose, for me, yeah. um, and I'm sure everybody, uh, a lot of people think that way. Right. So, yeah, we'll, well, we'll remain remain <laughs> just quietly confident, I think, Alan. Yeah, uh, people are confident around the place. If you ask Sheffield Wednesday supporters, are, are we in a good position? You'll, you'll, I think, get quite a wide variety of replies to that. Uh, some are happy, mm -hmm. some are not. They're not playing well, say some. Uh, it's, you know, I'll, I'll take it because getting results and not playing well is a good sign. I'm slightly confused as to, as to where to pitch this at the moment. Go on. Where are I you? Think, where yeah, are I you think most people it? are confused, aren't they? But yeah, um, I think it's quite easy to to get carried away, and especially on the success of last year, you know, getting to Wembley, which was a, in my opinion, the the sort of over excelled the last year. You know, we yeah. I, I didn't really expect them to get there, and and although they came up short, the expectation level then this year gets higher. And in in some quarters, I think is probably a little bit too high, mm. especially at the start of the season where people were talking about, you know, automatic, automatic promotion. Yeah. I never that thought kind that of was thing. On, ever. No, I, I don't think anybody yeah. with any any reasonable football knowledge yeah. thought that. Um, going back to what we've just said, that you don't you, you don't voice or 
pin your hopes on something or, or shout from the rooftops about something so big when you know there's 46 games to play and absolutely anything can happen in a, in a championship, which is a really, really tough league, yeah. tough league this year. Um, so I think, I think you've got to t take a step back and, and have a look at it. And, you know, we're in sixth, sixth position. Um, we've not played particularly well. There's been the odd game. Newcastle away was fabulous. And we've had a couple of, of patches in games where um, the tempo comes up and we, we, we look like, you know, we desperately need to score a goal. And it's as if we, we can turn, turn the sort of like turn the volume up or, yeah. or you know turn the screw and and step up a gear and and i just like like to see us start games like that you know yeah. start games and, and and go out go out teams and, yeah. and and you know knock them out of sight because the best teams that i ever played against and i'm sure toddy's yeah. the same you know when they got for a cliche when they got the the foot on your throat they, they never let go no. you know they'll never let go and and you walked off on the on, on the on the, the end of a hiding. Sheffield United got the early goal last week against Wimbledon four 0 It made such a difference to the performance and, and what happened. But you're not going to get the early goal unless you start the game on the front foot. And Correct. I agree entirely with you from what I've seen. I'm mystified as to why the team doesn't start in a more offensive way and mm. wait until the second half. Although I can't fault sixth place. I think sixth place is more than part of the course. I think it's an excellent position to be in. But I, th I think it's a know. good return. But yeah, but yeah I'm, I'm, I'm like you. And, 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 you know, in all the time I was involved in football and, and, and afterwards, it was always drilled into me that it's really difficult to up the tempo in a game. You know, mm. if you start slowly, to, to raise that tempo halfway through the game is a difficult thing to do. You know, if you start quickly, you can carry that momentum through the game and, and, and you set your stall out yeah. from, from the first minute. And, you know, Sheffield and that comes from a manager, doesn't yeah, it? It comes how you so, set yeah. up tactically, yeah. 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 Um, motivationally. Um, but you can't knock him on his record. You know, his record's no. very good, particularly at, at Hillsborough. And he is, uh, the one thing uh, after the game at Wigan, which was awful, because you, you, yeah. you watched it, I, I was there, uh, uh, unfortunately. And it was awful from both sides' point of view. But they won the match, and Carlos was very emphatic afterwards about, you will see, from now on, we will play better than this. Mm -hmm. He was very, mm -hmm. very sure of it. And he's got loads of options. I've seen Loads and loads of options. Yeah, I've seen the interview with him this yeah. week where he said, the rest of the season starts this week. Yeah. And so maybe he's also taken a step back and thought, you know, we've just, we've just not clicked. And, mm. and I think there's a multitude, multitude of reasons for that. You know, I think... I think he's got an abundance of players. Yeah. You know, last year he didn't have as many players. There are too many in that squad. Up. I think so. Yeah, I think so. Too many, too many good players. Too many players who, who can all vie for the same position, for the same role, and and really you could, you could get whew, what 18, 20, maybe 22 from up in the air, and you'd you'd have a team every week, wouldn't you? Yeah. You know, whereas sometimes when you've got your, your, your set 11 and there's two or three on the, on the peripheral and mm. it sort of like picks itself, doesn't it? And, you know, and they're, and they're, also, they all, they're also pretty confident and sure. Yeah. And, so that's a massive part of it, isn't I, it? I'm going to come back to John in a moment as to who he would pair with Jordan Rhodes up front because I wrote a column about that today and I've got various thoughts on it. I'm sure John has, but a bit of thinking time there. Chris Wilder now has all sorts of options. It was interesting against Wimbledon, having brought several new players in, that he only actually promoted one to the starting lineup, and yeah. what an impact James Hansen had to the team dynamic. He was he was he was excellent, wasn't he, on his, on, his, yeah. on a home debut? With, um, expectations. It's exactly what we required. I think um, his ability to um, not just go long or go to the back stick and cross as he actually joined in. He came short and he was setting up uh, allowing Billy to peel into, into channels. So I think those two are going to complement each, uh, each other really well. Uh, um, certainly on first look, yeah. um, he's going to be superb for us. Interestingly, it's about, Chris mentioned today, about how he keeps the others sort of motivated, um, happy, buoyant, you know, seeing an opportunity to, to get in there. As I say, there's going to be different scenarios throughout the rest of the season where he's going to need that squad. Yeah. I think he knows maybe to, to a degree his best 11 yeah. um, with Hansen and Billy up there yeah. as his top two, of course. You'd think that that would be the automatic starting Absolutely. partnership from now on Absolutely. in, wouldn't you? Because there's goals there. There's yeah. a variety of, um, of, 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 of a skill set there, either short and long, um, without sort of pigeonholing James um, 
too much sort of, you know, the Nal Quins, the Peter Crouch, these well, they all had very good feet, and the big man showed on Saturday. Yeah. He's also got very good feet as well. Well, Keelan Lavery came on and scored an excellent goal, and he yeah. looks like he can contribute every time he comes yeah, on. Yeah, like you said, there's a variety there. Yeah. You've, you've got Donny Coleman coming on. So. Jay O'Shea apparently is close to it on what he's been showing in training. Yeah, yeah. you've got Carruthers in behind there, um, yeah. potentially if, if Duffy or, or, or one of the other sort of creative midfield players get an injury or there's a suspension, you just don't know, do you? What was good for me was being able to say, we'll take our talisman off, you know, Billy Sharp. 19 goals this season, undroppable, yeah. absolutely right, undroppable, yeah. 90 yeah. fantastic return. Yeah. And was able to bring him off and Billy reacting in the right way. He was in here, sure. he was in here making the point against himself yeah. that at times I've been a bit stroppy when I've been substituted. Yeah. I've got to, you know, realise my responsibility as captain. Absolutely. And he, he clearly took that on board at the lane last Saturday. Because it needs a harmonious dressing room in order to, 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 to push and he's setting the example to push us over the line. We're going to need absolutely everybody at varying times, um, whether it's 20 minutes, yeah. half, whatever. Um, Chris does make early good decisions. Um, yeah, he does. None of them as I do over the last 30 years. I, could, I see his progression like any, you know, any player. He makes great decisions at, 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 at the right times. What I notice about that is he's prepared to make those decisions 10 or 15 minutes into the second half, Absolutely. whereas most managers leave it until 20 minutes from time. Yeah, 35 minutes of cock clock, so many changes yeah. in 35 minutes. He's bold, he's brave, he's got Alan uh, and, and his team around him advising, yeah. and, and, but again, when he, when, he, when he wants to change something, it invariably does, he's and not. it has an effect. Yeah, tends to. Uh, John, you've had a little bit of thinking time about this equation. It's not simple, is it? It's quite a complicated one because if anybody needs any reminding, Sheffield Wednesday's strike options now, apart from the uh, Jordan Rhodes and apart from Fernando Forestieri, who partnered him at uh, Wigan, include F uh, Fletcher, Stephen Fletcher, when he's over the suspension, I think he's got one match to go. Mm -hmm. Gary Hooper, who's close to being fit again. Sam Winnell, let's not forget, a half a million pound signing before the deadline, a brilliant debut as substitute. Who else? Atty Newhu, who doesn't look like getting in at all. Mm. So which one of those do you see as being... Because we're, we're assuming that Jordan Rhodes is going to start every game, near enough. Well, yeah? I mean, to bring a guy in on loan and, and, and you know, reputedly we're paying, what, up to eight, eight million, eight million quid, something enough, like yeah. that in the summer for him. You don't bring him, you don't bring a player like that to Sheffield Wednesday and, and, and he's not the first name on the team sheet. Yeah. You know, he's got, he's got to start, hasn't he? Um, but, you know, they've got a, an absolute abundance of, of, of strikers at the moment. And I think just what we touched on before, and, and I have this week, the fact that the window um, allows this to happen with clubs now that, um, you know, you've got to get a player in before you can get one out the door. And, and if that player doesn't come in till the last minute, you end up with, yeah. with, with we've got half a dozen strikers. For you know? instance, Satin knew who could have gone on loan somewhere else. He would have had Possibly. takers. I mean, Jao went go. out on I mean, we, we got Jao out on loan. So if yeah. not, we'd have had seven. I mean, yes. you know. Um, and George so, Hurst. Let me, I didn't yeah. mention George Hurst. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, yeah, so yeah you, you, you know, um, it, it just depends how he's going to set up. You know, um, Reach is, Adam reaches out on the left, left hand side. Does he drop him back into full back? But Fox has come in and, and played well on his debut. Yes. Um, Forestieri might play on the left hand side. Fletcher, I thought, was great at the start of the season and he's just yeah. not scored as many goals as I think, you know, and he's not just had that, he's just not had that bit no. of luck, really. Um, yeah. So, what would you do there of those players? If you had them all available, which, which of those potentially do you think would dovetail best with Jordan Rhodes? Have you a thought on that as well? I think I think I'd go yeah. with Forestieri to start with. Would you? Well, yeah. Carlos has done. I would do. Yeah, at yeah. I think I would do. I, I think goals are crucial, aren't they? Yeah. Goal scorers yeah. are crucial. If they two can blend together, perhaps. You know. I just see. I, I mean, you've got to work with them in training as well. I mean, you know, you stick them in training, and you do you do bits with them, and you and you find out who who who, who, who links with each other and, and gels, and you know, and that's a that's a big part of it. You know, not just. Obviously, what happens on a Saturday is, 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 is the most important, but, but you get a picture in training and you see how people gel together. And, and sometimes the most <laughs> extraordinary strike pairings 
happen, don't well, they? Where yeah. you where you think? Yeah. You know, I never saw that one, yeah. but it may happen. But all of a sudden, the gel and, and the compliment, compliment yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. So, well, they're the two biggest match-winning talents they've got. So ideally, you would pair them. I just wonder whether Rhodes has always scored goals off a bigger man. Mm. You know, in his career at uh, Huddersfield and at Blackburn when he had just stead, and it was Lee Novak, I think, at Huddersfield, and. If you are partnering him with Forestieri, you're asking him to do the line leader target man shift, which he never particularly has been known for. You what do, do you but, think? but did he play like that? Did he no. play with a did he play with a you know a big striker leading the line? I don't th I don't no. think we play like that really, you know. But they've um, got to get it forward a bit earlier. Too. But I do think we've got to get it forward earlier, but I also think we need to we need to run in the channel and we need to stretch the game and I think Jordan yeah. Rose can do that. Yeah. You know? So sometimes and Maybe him stretching it allows Forestieri to drop into that hole. The hole's bigger. That that you know that gives you more time to play, more space to play in. You know that's that's what I've been sort of like championing all season really. That I think we, as strikers, we come to the ball because we want it to feet and we condense the play too much, and our our short passing yeah. then becomes too tight and too too narrow and, and we can't get through people. It's easy to mark as well. Yeah, it? absolutely. Good it's good easy, well, easy yeah. to stack up against. But interesting you're talking about. The options we have up top, if if the Carlos changes it around, what's the mindset of a Forest area if he's not playing regularly? Sam Winnell, um, all right, he's just come along. So yeah. that kind of mindset, that they talk yeah, about that absolutely. harmony, getting them through the line, maybe getting them yeah. towards that playoff. But well, the one thing about Forestieri, whatever you know, however fragile he might be temperamentally about where he wants to play, etc., does not work for the team. Again, as he showed at Wigan, mm -hmm. he can, you know, he, he does. Mix it, yeah. and it. And getting it wide, they've got any number of options out there. You can count them. You've got Wallace, you've got Reach, you've got McManaman, you've got Will Buckley, who we've not seen coming back to fitness. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Like so, I you know, said, they've got any a, number. They've got an absolute abundance of talent, and, and, and like Mark said, the really, really difficult part for me would be keeping everybody happy, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, because there are lads who, who will be happy to just. just sit and take the money and, and train them but there's, there's yeah. other lads who, who, who i don't think will be too happy about it you know no. i mean sam winnell you know he's come to the club he, he made a he had a great debut when he came on a substitute he's probably sat there now thinking am i going to get in have I, have I come to the right place <laughs> the right decision off the back of me they've just signed an eight million pound striker yeah you know yeah. where do i fit in now and you know it must be it's got to be tough for him i think carlos is probably very, very good at this. I imagine his personal relationships and man management. Certainly Chris Wilder it seems to excel at that as well, he's, uh, Mark. Yeah, I think that's, uh, he does get the best out of him. He's, I say he's gone, he's, he's interviewed today and talked about keeping the squad happy, um, yeah. which is very, very important. Um, but I think with Chris, it's, he, it's very black and white. He's very, for me, he's an, on, he's an honest guy. Mm. Um, he'll tell you exactly why he's dropped you um, if he needs to. Um, he'll put an arm round. He's brought people back into the fold, sort of school of this school, uh, and and coach is a revelation, yeah. of course. And and the right back and, um, and and Kieran Freeman, Kieran Freeman yeah. who's one of our top goal scorers yeah. now, um, bombing forward. Yeah. So I think that man management side is crucial. I say not just for that first eleven, uh, your top eleven, keeping that twenty, yeah. that twenty-two happy is absolutely vital. Uh, and I'd imagine Carlos being very good one-to-one -one as well with Wednesday players, yeah, and keeping think, them in the loop and exactly what he's thinking is. I think the game's a squad right. game now, you know, yeah. you know, without trying to sound like an old man, but, you know, <laughs> back, back in the day when, you know, when we, when I first started, yeah. especially, you know, there were, the, you know, 15, 16 lads and that, that was your lot. And I mean, you look at the history books, don't you? Liverpool, Won the title with, team, with 14 players or something yeah. stupid, didn't they? You know what I mean? It's whereas now it's, it's a squad thing, and you know, with the game it's last night, the FA Cup, it's gone too far, though. And it was, you know, you can't, you know, players can't play three games in a week, and I've got to rest them, I've got to drop, you know. What's the best size of a squad? I'm going for 22 in a squad. I said 20, 22. Um, what do you reckon, John? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I you think, because I mean, if, if you look at it, you've got 11, yeah. you've got 11 to go, you've got 11 to start, yeah, and a ready made replacement. And you're always going to have a couple of knocks, yeah. aren't you? A couple of lads yeah. injured and a couple yeah, of suspensions. suspensions. And that's where yeah. the young lads come, come into to bolster that Indeed. squad as well. And what's the best length of an ad break? About five minutes. About five minutes. And then more from these guys. James will join us as well. More from Toddy and more from John Newsom. I hope you'll be there. See you.